FA Skateboards, you guys. Arguably the most popular brand in skateboarding. For sure the most trendy. So it's kind of funny that I've actually gone a year and a half without reviewing a brand this popular. I think part of the reason was, what am I gonna call the thing? I mean, I can't even say the name on my channel. In fact, I waited until I've worn it off to even start the review. And I hope I'm not the only one that sees the irony in thinking about what kids are actually exposed to on the internet, especially unsupervised, versus the threat of a swear word. But anyways, we're not here to talk about all that nonsense. We're here to talk about these boards. And they do have some of the most interesting shapes that I've come across. And they are the trendsetters for some of the most interesting shapes. So I have here the Gino Iannucci model. This is eight inches. It is 31 and three quarters long and it has a 14 and a quarter wheelbase. Now the interesting thing about this board is the massive square, super steep nose and then the small square tail. So this nose is half an inch bigger than the tail. And the typical variance from a nose to your tail is usually a quarter inch. So a nose might usually be about six and three quarters and a tail could be six and a half. This one is seven inches and this is six and a half. So let's take a quick look at this shape. So here's the tail, very square. You can see it's like a line back there. Here's the nose, massive and blunt. It's huge. See if you can see the difference here. Take a look at it this way. So the tail is pretty short and shallow and the nose is like five degrees steeper and huge. Totally different. So I found this setup pretty shocking to skate in the first few days. The tail, although mellow, because it's so short, you still actually get your nose up quite high for your tricks. So it's still good for things like 360 flips. And the nose is so massive. And then I had these big 52 millimeter lock-ins and thunders. So it was like way too poppy. And I was used to flat decks and indies. So here's some footage of me skating in underground, trying to get used to this thing. And you'll notice, I don't quite have control over it, but occasionally do my tricks well. Lofty. What? I said lofty. Okay. 
Make this one work out again. done my favorite trick on this deck by far has been switch heel flips that massive nose is just like a launch ramp under my feet so I did find the lock-ins a bit cumbersome at first and I ended up switching them to the radials that I was riding that were about 50 millimeters instead of 52 and narrower so that really lightened and kind of freshened this setup up for me are coming that ends another all Canadian fatty to flatty session so I've been riding this deck for about three weeks and I would say after the first week the tail started to go a tiny bit soft so one other thing that's kind of unique about it while the kicks felt super steep the concave is actually not flat but a medium concave so you got the steep nose medium concave that actually feels flat by comparison another bizarre thing about this board that I should note is it felt super heavy and when I weighed it, it was. So a typical eight inch board weighs about 1200 to 1250 grams. This deck weighed 1350 before grip. It also felt super thick. And I wasn't sure if that was just the full dip, the fact that the whole board was dipped in paint, well sprayed, they call it a full dip, or if it was actually thick. And sorry guys, I'm not about to buy a pair of calipers to actually measure, but it did feel noticeably thicker than other brands that I've been riding and the heft of that deck did not go unnoticed. Thankfully, I'm riding Thunder 147 Titaniums, super light, which have made this totally manageable. So there's more to this deck though. It's not just, I mean, I think this is a really cool board and I don't just mean cool like the kids like it. I mean, like, let's take a look at this thing, the paint. So it's got the full dip and then underneath, they've still got the colored plies. So they've got the yellow ply on the bottom, which I always like. They've got this cool orange color on the top. They've even got a pink ply in the middle. And then the paint itself almost looks like there's two layers of paint. So we've got what looks like white paint with the sort of creamy yellow paint over top. And even the way the paint flakes off the board looks super cool. It doesn't just slide off, it sort of chips and peels off and has this super cool effect. Another thing I find really interesting about that effect is as a carpenter, I'm always doing renovations in old houses. And so sometimes when you're sanding some of the old woodwork, old painted woodwork, it's got like multiple years of paint on it. So you'll sand through and you've got the avocado layer from the 60s, you've got the peach layers from the 80s, you've got pinks, you've got all kinds of colors. And so this totally reminds me of the woodwork on Renault's when I start sanding it. And I like that, it's interesting to me. It's different than what most boards look like. However, all that paint, again, could be what makes this deck feel so heavy. So while it did get a little bit more flexible on the tail in that first week, it's maintained its feel over the last two weeks. It's still feeling really nice. And now that I'm super used to these big kicks, I've put these Spitfire lock-ins back on and I'm loving it again. 
Also, once I get onto some smooth ground, I can actually get my 360 flips nicely on this board. The other thing I love about the super blunt kicks is it's really nice for standing up on slides. So I'm doing my best in these clips here, you guys. So yes, even at eight inches, there's still lots of room for my foot. So I've ridden decks that are eight and a quarter with a pointy kick that have a lot less room on the kick than these. I also want to note, let's take a look at the engineering of a deck because there is actually some engineering that goes into decks. So I don't think they just went, I want huge noses and short tails and make them really square and hope it works out. There's actually some planning that goes into this. So the fact that the nose is so steep means that it goes up more like this when you kick down and because of that the bluntness doesn't get in the way for your 360 flips and scoopy tricks as much as it normally would and the exact same thing goes for the tail if the tail was longer at the angle it is the shallower angle your nose and tail wouldn't get up as high but because they've shortened the tail so much you still get that up higher and it still makes for a really nice scoopy trick so it's a super interesting design i'm not surprised they're so popular and i have enjoyed riding this board I will say though that I am looking forward to getting onto another deck that's a little closer to the proportions that I'm used to. I would like this tail to be an eighth longer and this nose to be an eighth shorter and I would like the kicks leveled back out to the same consistency. Because I like things the way I've always ridden them. Would you look at that? The sun is showing up in this very grey city for the last minute of this video. Anyways, I would definitely ride another FA deck. I think they are awesome. But I don't think I would want to ride these exclusively because there are some things I found it just kind of limiting or a bit weird for. Anyways, that's the FA skateboard review that everybody's been waiting for. I hope it wasn't totally anticlimactic for you. Basically, from the moment people saw that I had one of these, they're like, What's the review? What's the review? What's it? It's like, you guys, if you see the board, you know it's going to be another month before you're going to see the review. Okay? Just take it easy. Here it is. It's over. It's over now. Now you can do something else. Like, click away from this video. And I need to skate, because it's sunny. <laughs>